There are a lot of dead geckos on Earth, and the goal of this video is to minimize that number as much as possible. The thing is, they're such a common beginner lizard that a lot of people have issues with them that they don't even notice, or they do little things that they don't even think really matters. So in this video, I'm going to go over a bunch of the most common things that you should avoid when caring for leopard geckos to ensure they live out the longest lives possible. And not just live the longest lives possible, but actually have pretty enriching and fulfilling lives that they can actually live instead of just survive. In this video, we'll be covering metabolic bone disease, which you hear a lot, stuck shed, which you've also probably heard, calcium sacs, which are seem to be a little less common, parasites, and some dietary choices. Starting with metabolic bone disease, this is a leopard gecko that we got sent in, and believe it or not, it has metabolic bone disease. This is what happens when an animal is cared for improperly and its skeletal structure does not grow as it should. The thing about bones is you can't really change it. If your gecko is over or underweight, you can adjust the diet and actually reach the proper weight. But when it comes to bones, they're kind of solid. Once they're in place, they're pretty much in place and you can't reverse it. Some people say you can, but even after we've cared for multiple reptiles with metabolic bone disease for years after, you can slow it down or stop it, but it never reverses or it gets better. With many animals like bearded dragons, it's often the lighting that causes that, but it happens in geckos too. Obviously there's going to be occasional deformations that just naturally occur with animals and like mutations and stuff, but this gecko actually has metabolic bone disease so bad that its left arm is completely twisted backwards and um, it doesn't look very comfortable. <laughs> so we've gotten a handful of geckos with issues like this, and this is just a pretty unique one. And you'll also probably notice it is completely covered in this white film, and that is stuck shed that we'll get into in a second. When it comes to leopard geckos, usually metabolic bone disease is caused by an improper diet, uh, most often simply feeding a simple single insect and not dusting it. Dusting is including a special calcium or multivitamin substance on the insect that they're fed. So I have a video covering leopard gecko care where I actually talk in detail about dusting their insects. The idea with dusting is that you're giving them certain nutrients that they wouldn't necessarily get from a specific insect. Because a lot of people just feed their gecko a single bug forever, which is okay, but it's not super, you know, enriching because they're just eating the same thing. And so say somebody just keeps feeding their gecko this one insect with no multivitamins or anything, there's a likelihood it won't have the right vitamins to grow properly. And that is likely what happened in this case, especially when they're young, because when they are little babies, they're going to be growing the most. So if they are just malnourished, they might simply not develop properly. So what's the actual outcome of this? What's the problem? Well, first, they look kind of weird and this gecko can't even stay on me. He just keeps falling off. Is it a he? I don't actually know. It is a he. It's a boy. So most of his legs are fine, but again, he has a slightly weird spine and then it's mostly his front left leg that's gonna stand out. I think I have some clips of some other geckos you can see where it affects them all differently and they just look kind of pitiful. It makes moving around difficult and that extra pressure and weight on those joints in the natural ways probably cause some discomfort. Even if they get used to it, the pain is still gonna be there. Um, and I'm sure it's just not super comfortable. The other issue in this case is he actually cannot use his feet to pull off his own shed. He started going in the shed yesterday, uh, pretty good timing for the video. And because of that, he cannot use his feet to pull it off. So I'm gonna get to do it all manually. Uh, this is an additional problem because leopard geckos eat their shed when it comes off because they're recycling the nutrients that they would otherwise be losing. But I can't really just like force feed him his own shed. I guess theoretically I could, but that would be kind of, I'm not gonna do that. So to avoid metabolic bone disease, simply make sure you're feeding a sustainable, healthy and mixed diet. And uh, in the case of other reptiles, make sure they have the right lighting, for example. Next, let's go in a stuck shed a little bit more. Cause although it's obvious on this gecko, oftentimes there will just be a little bit of stuck shed on a gecko's toe or foot or leg or tip of their nose or the tip of the tail. Those are the most common places I see the problem. Now. What's the big deal? Why does it really matter if there's just this little bit of shed on your gecko somewhere? Not much, but if it starts to build up over time, and if the gecko sheds a second time and the shed is still stuck, it's gonna start constricting that body part. The body part is gonna completely lose blood flow 
and fall off. I mean, like think about like a rubber band on your arm. It's gonna feel like that, but like wrapped around multiple times and then your arm's gonna fall off. It's the same idea with geckos, but the difference is it's their shed doing it on any part of their body. Uh, if a leopard gecko actually senses some sort of danger, it will naturally drop its tail. For example, if an animal were to grab its tail, it can get away by dropping the tail and scooting off. And the animal just has this wiggling tail that it's distracted by. But Parts of the tails also commonly fall off, which is not natural and not supposed to happen because of shed on the tip constricting it and pulling it off. Uh, same thing with the toes. We had one gecko that was completely toeless. It was really cute and I really liked it. And it would just slide all over the place because it had no claws. Uh, even just getting stuck on the claw, it's just like if you had something right past your fingernail, it's like your fin fingertip falling off basically. And so that's happened with a lot of leopard geckos and they have trouble moving around and obviously it's gonna be uncomfortable. There's also been lost limbs, lost feet and uh, damaged noses. Basically, what should you avoid? Well, you should just make sure the gecko each time it sheds, it gets it all off and that there's no white spots remaining because if it builds up, your gecko is probably gonna lose some limbs. Next up, we've got calcium sacs. At the moment, I don't have any geckos with calcium sacs, but what these are are these weird armpit bulges on leopard geckos. If you check your gecko, it's possible you'll see some. Normally it's just pretty flat here. Sometimes it even goes inwards a little bit. And other times there will be this excessive skin that kind of squishes and squeezes as the gecko moves. And what this is, is an excess buildup of calcium. Uh, if you are feeding too much calcium in the diet, then this will often happen. So basically it's not causing any harm for them to have that sac and most likely this isn't going to cause many long-term issues. In my experience, it has not really, like we've gotten geckos that have clearly had these sacs for years and they're still fine, uh, but you still wanna make sure they're not basically overdosing on calcium. And all you have to do is simply cut back their calcium. What we usually do is if one comes in, we will just stop giving it any calcium at all, like additional calcium on their insects. And we'll just feed it straight insect, maybe, or straight insects, with maybe just a little bit of multivitamin. The goal with this is that the gecko will use up all the calcium in its pits, and then you can start giving it just a little bit of calcium, but not as much that you were giving it before. Uh, it's pretty simple, pretty easy, and normally they go away within a couple weeks for us. Sometimes we've had some that last for months, even though they don't get any calcium, because it's just such a strong buildup. Oftentimes, when this happens, it'll have loose skin. Like think about an overweight person losing a bunch of weight, and they just have like this flab left over. Same thing with leopard geckos. They're gonna have this weird pit, but it's better than having a huge excess of calcium. So just check on this and make sure it's all good. It's happened with my leopard gecko, Goldie. He just started to slowly build it up. And once I noticed, cut it back and it went down again. So it's not some super stressful thing, but it's good to keep in check. Next up, let's talk parasites and how to avoid them. So parasites are little microscopic organisms that enter an animal's body and is, I mean, most people know what parasites are. I don't know why I'm explaining it. Um, and this gecko is not happy with me talking about his then parasites. This gecko used to have parasites, but it has since healed up and grown a ton. Uh, it actually came with a second leopard gecko. I think they were related and someone had purchased them both. We got them from Craigslist quite a while ago, over a year ago actually, because I, I secretly held it back for a little bit because I wanted to see him grow more. Uh, at least I think it's a male. So basically parasites are gonna eat away at the nutrition that normally the gecko is going to get itself from its food. And I also have an example of a thin leopard gecko with us who I'm not handling right this second, but he most recently had parasites and you can just tell how they basically took away all of that nutrients. Now, a gecko being underweight is not necessarily caused by parasites. It might be an improper diet or not enough food or even stress, which will cause an animal not to eat and then obviously lose weight. But in this case, none of those factors were possible because it's fed the same diet as the rest of our geckos and we can easily move it to a new area and make sure all of the husbandry is correct, like its temperatures, uh, so we know that it's not stressed out. And obviously if it's eating a ton and not gaining weight, it probably has parasites. I always forget the name off the top of my head. I'll try to find it. There is a just generic parasite medication on Amazon that we've used. And that's what worked for him and he's starting to gain weight now. Ideally, if you are new with reptiles, you'll bring it to a veterinarian who can do a fecal test and just check its feces to see if it can see any eggs of different parasites. If they do, they'll prescribe you medication. Usually it's just an oral medication. Uh, you 
feed it to it through a syringe, and that will kill the parasites. Once the parasites seem to be gone, uh, then they're gone. <laughs> Once the parasites seem to be gone, the leopard gecko tends to start gaining weight, just like this one, who was way thinner, but now it's nearly doubled in size since we've had it. My Savannah monitor Bonnebel, for example, had parasites, and she got super stunted. She's now just forever tiny because she lost out on most of that time that she could grow. But this leopard gecko is almost at an adult size um, because the parasites were caught early enough with us. So unfortunately, the other one that we had did not survive because it was just so far gone that the parasites uh, had basically done so much damage before we started treating because we had started treating as soon as we got the geckos, but the previous person didn't notice and didn't really act on it. So it passed away because it was just way too malnourished. But uh, this one did pull through and now it's looking really good. So yeah, if your gecko is ridiculously underweight or very thin, uh, parasites are a possible option. Where do they come from? Normally, <laughs> I'm drinking too much Sprite. Well, in reptiles, it's normally because they are wild caught animals, meaning that somebody went and removed the animal from its natural habitat. And parasites are everywhere. Many animals have ticks and fleas and mites and parasites and all these issues in the wild. And so if they're brought into captivity, they're still gonna have those. With leopard geckos, they're really never wild caught. So normally it comes from people feeding wild insects to them or another animal that was wild caught and then transfers parasites. So for example, if an irresponsible seller uh, has some wild caught animals around their leopard geckos and they somehow come in contact with each other's fluids, then the leopard gecko might become parasitic. So just try and keep things sanitary, try and make sure all your animals are parasite free before putting them near each other, and uh, just keep an eye on them. The final issue we'll be talking about today uh, does not happen very often, but it does happen in the occasional leopard gecko, and that is a diet that just does not sit well with them. Uh, we feed generally mealworms, superworms, crickets, and dubia roaches. Uh, sometimes we have other things like calci worms or horn worms or wax worms, stuff like that for different variety. And some leopard geckos simply don't do well with certain uh, foods. So for example, this leopard gecko, who we haven't had for a super long time, recently got mealworms, but he ended up vomiting them back up. And I, there was actually some on his tail, so it's now in my hand. It doesn't smell great either. A leopard gecko vomiting or regurgitating is definitely not a good sign, and it's actually often a sign of something being internally wrong. So it's very rare that we have an animal vomit or regurgitate, but if it does happen with a new arrival, if it just happens once, we don't really worry about it. We mark it down, keep track, and just document it. And often we take pictures in case we do need it later. If it happens twice, that usually means that something is pretty wrong. Uh, usually the first thing we do is change the diet, Especially with geckos, we simply change them to a different food. Because the mealworm vomit, for example, it just still looks like mealworms. They're pretty whole and they just came up. Uh, if it happens more than two times, then that's definitely when we get them checked out because that's going to be something likely internal if you have not changed the diet. They could have some sort of intestinal issue, some sort of virus or bacteria in them that simply is not letting them keep the food down. But we've never actually had that happen. It's always just once or twice and we change something and it never happens again. And I would say it's most likely that is the case with this leopard gecko, because I think this one normally got crickets or something, uh, but we gave it mealworms because I was just throwing in different insects and the mealworms did not settle well with them. Uh, I guess pretty much, do all insects have exoskeletons? I guess they have to have an exoskeleton to be an insect. I only know reptiles, I don't know. But the exoskeletons are harder of certain insects like mealworms and superworms, they're very hard and crunchy and just firm overall when stuff like dubia roaches or crickets are pretty soft overall. So some geckos simply don't seem to have the stomach to take the stronger uh, skeletons on those animals or on those insects. Well, I guess mealworms aren't even insects, are they? I don't know. Well, yes, they are because they're... Let's not get into this. Basically, the idea is if you're a gecko, uh, regurgitates or vomits, don't ignore it, but also don't freak out. Uh, I would say neither are the right response. I would say if it happens once, just keep track, mark it down, take as many notes as you can, maybe even keep a sample of the stuff and you could go get it checked out and uh, try and make a change that will help the gecko out. Because uh, this happens with other animals too, like some breed of dragons just, they even eat too many because that is another issue that causes it is overfeeding. 
if the gecko eats too many of something, it's like a person. If you like drink too much or eat too many things, it's just an overload and it's expelled. So I, yeah, I should have mentioned that. Make sure that you are not feeding them too much, which how much is too much? It's hard to say. Most geckos, we just free feed them and they know when to stop. But if it does happen, maybe try half of that and see how that goes. Uh, you could feed half more often or something, for example, if that is the issue. And then if it keeps happening, uh, that's when I would say you should bring the animal in and get its vomit basically checked. Um, usually they don't really examine that kind of thing, and normally they'll examine the actual animal itself. So just bring both, and hopefully your exotic vet will know how to help. So the five issues we just covered, first off, metabolic bone disease, make sure you have the right diet. You'll notice most of these are diet based for leopard geckos. For stuck shed, ensure that they get their shed off each time. You can help uh, ensure that they don't get stuck shed by using a humidity box, which I think I've mentioned before. With leopard geckos, you, we usually just take a plastic container, cut a hole in it, put some paper towel, spray the paper towel, and the gecko will find that box when it needs more humidity. Uh, or moisture in the air, and it'll go shed there. But even if it does have that, just check the animal over, make sure there's nothing stuck to it shed-wise, and then if there is, try and peel it off the best you can, and uh, keep its limbs on. Next up, calcium sacs. Simply, if they're getting too much calcium, they'll develop pits. And then parasites, if your animal is not growing or super underweight, that is a possibility. And then of course, certain diets or too much of food may be bothering your animal. So what are some other things people should avoid in leopard geckos? Uh, let me and them know in the comments. Uh, why is he biting me? What is he eating? He's just nibbling at my hand for some reason. Again? All right. Well, if you want to support me on Patreon, you can check that link down below. Uh, I have recommendations for a bunch of supplies I use too, so just check the description for a bunch of stuff. Maybe you'll find something useful. I have a bunch of other Leopard Gecko videos you can check out, and that's it for this video. So I'm Alex, this is a grumpy gecko, and thanks for watching. Look, he's still biting. It doesn't even hurt, he's not biting hard. Okay.